Welcome. It's so good to be with you on this Wednesday as we get together for a little midweek Bible study and devotional time. And I'm so glad that you've taken the time to join us today to do just that. Uh, just a reminder that we do meet on Wednesdays uh, in person. It's nice to meet online, but it's also nice to meet in person. Uh, and we meet at 6.30 on Wednesdays for Bible study. And we'd love to have you come join us uh, for uh, just digging into God's Word and being together in the fellowship that comes together. But it's also nice to meet online, and wherever that is, whether it's in person or online, we're so glad that you uh, have joined us to, to get together for a little Bible study, to open up God's Word, and hopefully be encouraged and uplifted today. You know, I don't know if you can relate, but I wonder sometimes how much I truly understand about prayer. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I, I pray, and I love prayer, I love to pray, uh, and I know what the Bible tells me about prayer. It's just that I sometimes struggle to understand and wrap my head around exactly how it works. You know, for instance, sometimes I pray for what I think are good things and they don't come. Uh, other times I pray for myself or others to be spared bad things and yet they still happen. And I just struggle to wrap my head around how exactly prayer works. How, how do I even know what to pray for? Maybe you can relate to questions like those or, or struggles like those, maybe at least part, as I, I think more about it, maybe at least part of our problem is in praying for wrong things. And if that's the case, then I can certainly begin to see how prayer could be confusing. I mean, when we're wrong-headed or even selfish in what we ask, we can hardly blame God for not answering those prayers. Uh, let me try to make sense of, of what I'm saying by giving you a, an example or telling you about an example from, from Scripture. Uh, in Acts chapter 4, back in the early days of the church, Peter and John were called before the religious leaders and authorities in Jerusalem. And basically they were ordered to stop preaching in Jerusalem, preaching about Jesus in Jerusalem. In fact, they were threatened that bad things would come down on them if they didn't stop. And so, duly warned, they were released. And when the two men got back with the other followers, other Jesus followers, they reported everything that had happened to them. Then they prayed these words in Acts chapter 4, verse 29. It's, just, it's so convicting to me. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. If I'm being honest, my fear is that I would have prayed for something different. For the officials maybe to back off, for sure, right? For divine protection from them, absolutely. For a new you know, call to my ministry, probably. And yet Peter and John prayed neither for protection or for a new assignment, Instead, they prayed for boldness to say and to preach what Jesus had told them to say and to preach. And so when it comes to our prayers, maybe you and I shouldn't pray for more things and more money. Maybe instead we could pray for the ability to appreciate what we have and to manage it wisely and to use it unselfishly. Maybe we should pray less to have those annoyances in our lives and, and those things that we have to deal with taken away. Not that it's a bad thing to pray for them, but maybe we should pray less for that, and maybe instead we could pray for patience and to know that God's grace is sufficient no matter what. Maybe we could even pray less about good health and success, and rather we could pray to be content and dignified and courageous in coping with whatever challenges come our way. You know, it's certainly within God's will that we pray for God's provision and uh, you know, that, that he takes care of us in our lives and for his deliverance in the midst of our, our trials and struggles that we face. Jesus models as much for us in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. But even Jesus prayed for things in Gethsemane that he qualified with the following statement, Yet not my will, but yours be done, Father. You see, sometimes God's will is better done when we bear our cross with courage rather than have our problems eliminated. That's why we surrender to His will over our own. That's why we accept the mystery that is sometimes inherent in His will, because we trust in Him. And so in the end, I guess I should probably worry less about understanding the nature of prayer and just should simply pray. I hope you have a blessed day. God bless.